Oh, you're watching Cal67 Gaming, and uh, at the time of recording, we're just about the end of February. Yep. So, two months pretty much down of 2022. It does. Um, which means can only be one thing. And it's our month in games. So February, uh, short month. Yeah. Uh, and actually, quite it was quite a busy month. So um, if anyone's expecting like a three-hour-long video of all the things that we played, you're not going to get it here. Um, we did play some stuff. Um, not a lot though, really. Didn't play a massive amount. I, I tell you, most of what I played this month actually was just little bits and pieces of uh, retro stuff. Um, I did play a lot on the other kid, mm. um, but nothing of any great time, although I probably will at some point because of the thing. I was kind of like going through all the games and seeing what I wanted to spend more time with and uh, I possibly will do that. So potentially um, that is next month. Possibly. Uh, but there was a few things that we did play, obviously, uh, and did stick some real quality time in. Yeah. Um, so probably the best place to start is where we always start. That's the games that we chose for each other last month. It is. So uh, for me last month, you chose uh, the the disc that you'd got me for my birthday. Yes. Um, which was? It was Sega Ages Volume 1. It certainly was. And that's on the, the Saturn. Yeah. Um, and I did play a bit of it, so we'll run a little bit of footage, see what you think. There's a few games on here. This is uh, the first one, which most people will recognise, Space yeah. Harrier. Um, so they're, 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 and they're all very similar, the, all, the, well they're all very different, the games, but they're all very similar technology on this disc. It's the, the super scalar Sega arcade board thing. Um, which isn't actually sure the worst thing to have. And you can see actually I'm I quite like Space Harrier, uh, and I'm doing well not to die, because you die a lot on Space Harrier. Well, there's a lot of obstacles, isn't there? There is. And sometimes, see them they fly in. They fly into the back here. And here we've got Afterburner. Afterburner are actually very similar to, to Space Harrier in a lot of ways. Uh, oops, I've got a hit there. But, I don't know. I think playing Afterburner on this collection makes me think that maybe the best thing about Afterburner was the uh, the cabinet that, that jolted you about all over the place. Um, it's like the gameplay doesn't really hold up as well. Even even the Space Area, which is a very similar game. Don't know why. Uh, but I mean, I still played a little bit of it. Just not as much as they did the other two titles. Uh, and this is the one that obviously I spent the most time with. Yeah, something that I, um, I expected uh, when I asked this, this is one of my favourite games of all time. Yeah. Uh, the out, outrun arcade game. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, I played it on everything. And I played it to death on everything, including like the god awful ZX Spectrum port. Um, but this is the definitive way to play it. And this is arcade perfect, even in so much as when you turn right. The Ferrari badge flips. Or is it when you turn left, the Ferrari badge flips? Uh, it's you, one of the directions. You can see, you can see it turning. And you know, when you turn it, uh, uh, it does flip. I bloody love Outrun. <laughs> <laughs> well, I knew that, and I, I, I went in uh, giving you that game, thinking. That's the game that you're going to obviously spend the most time on, oh, because it's the game you, out of three, which I hear you most talking about out of all three it, of them. Ever since the local leisure centre got the, the stand-up cab, when it first came out way back in, oh, the 86, loved this game, just absolutely love it. Um, love, love everything about it, love the game, you know, the the gameplay, I love the, the, uh, the music. Still, it still holds up after all this time. Still holds up. Yeah, amazing. Um, I think the the guys that that done the music for it 
they certainly used to. I think I think they still do actually tour Japan doing live gigs, playing the outrun music. Um, it, it was part of the whole whole thing. It was like the first game where music, or the first game that I remember when the music was a massive part of it. Um, and I did mention uh, that I played all the ports of it. And there was a god awful ZX Spectrum port, but it came with two cassettes. You don't know what a cassette is. Uh, I think I do. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I do know what it's like, it says. It's like an MP3 play, uh, MP3 file, but in physical form. Yeah. No. Um, but it came on two cassettes. The first one loaded the game onto the, the Spectrum, and the second one was, it was the music, because the Spectrum wasn't capable of doing it, and because it was such a big part of the the experience, um, they gave you it on a on a cassette. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't give you a good game to play with it. it so the Spectrum port was awful. But this is the arcade one, and lots of warm, fuzzy memories. I don't care where we are if we go into an arcade and we've got it run. I'm playing it. Um, I would really like the the arcade one up, but was well, there an arcade one up? But there is an arcade one up outrun in the states. Um, I've never seen it in the UK. Well, there's a few that they haven't brought over to the UK. Have we yet, or just haven't? No. I mean, not, not that we've got any space to put any more no. arcade machines, but um, I'd quite like the outrun one. Is that on your popular list? It, it probably would be. But I played that, loved it. Um, obviously, there's a couple of other games there. Space Harrier, I forgot how good the game Space Harrier is. Uh, it's just an immense amount of fun. Um, hard as nails, but that's you kind of kit, expect that from an arcade game, don't well, you? An arcade game, not just an arcade game, but a retro arcade game. Retro games were hard anyway, and the arcade they were even harder because they had to, to take as many of their ten pences as they could. Yeah, um, so kind of makes sense, obviously, why it's got such a like difficulty in it. So yeah. Um, I don't. I don't think to you, you. You see what I see when I when I play these games because graphically these games were just that whole super scale thing and the pseudo three D was just absolutely mind blown. It's not. It's not now because everything's in three D. But back at back then, oh, um, big disappointment though. After Burn now, um, for me, it doesn't hold up at all. Which is a surprise because it's such a similar game to Space Aria. But I think I've pinpointed what the problem is. We haven't had a Top Gun movie for a while. That was what After Burner's <laughs> whole popularity was based on. People watched uh, Top Gun. But there you go. That was, uh, that was a good little, little walk down memory lane for me. And I, I, no I doubt they're still going to play it. It's something that I'll keep going back with them. Um, and as much as I say I need an outrun arcade cabinet, actually, do you know, playing with the Saturn racing wheel, and it, it works. <laughs> it's like playing the arcade. So that's what uh, you asked me to play. I also asked you to play a game that I got you for your birthday. Yes, which was? Um, on the Wii U, Zelda Breath of the Wild. So here we are, this is in one of... I believe the shrines that are scattered along the entire world of Hyrule. Uh, this is one of the combat trials. Okay. Cause, uh, you struggled a lot with this one. Yeah, um, mainly because it was... I, I don't think you've actually beat it yet, have you? No, not yet. Um, I'm near go around with it because... So if somebody could give you some tips in the comments, <laughs> that would help. Um, probably. Um, I think the main reason is because I have, I think, two shields and barely any weapons and uh, I kind of need to get around the fact that it oh, does you, you way got, too much damage. You got, well, ah, if you stand in the way of that, you certainly got smacked there. Yeah. But, uh, but it's stupid because it's going to come straight at, at this big column. See, how how hard can it be to outsmart something that's that stupid? Well, it's got quite a large health bar, I'll be honest. Um, 
using uh, large help bar, low intellect. You're good. Yeah, but there's not a lot of columns. There's plenty. But, See, uh, there's another one. I've definitely enjoyed playing the portion that I've played of the game so far. And, and the fact that you're able to kind of take choose your own way around things, obviously being an open world game. But I've also quite liked the setting as well. Oh, Zelda Zelda, eh? Uh, in a way. No, I think it's fair to say that neither of us has ever really played a Zelda game. Is that? I mean, we've played bets. Played bets. Um, How did you get on with this one, though? Because this one's supposed to be pretty decent. It's actually really good. Um, I've, I mean, the third area that I've, like had a tower for, so obviously, the you've got a map, but most of it's uh, you can't see anything of it, so you have to go climb up a tower to then reveal more, more of the map using your Shigas Lake and then you have the there's a multiple shrines around for each place if you can play you get a spirit orb and if you get four you can ever upgrade your health for your stamina so I've had two upgrades on my health but I haven't upgraded my stamina yet that could be an error uh, probably will be but uh, there's tons of them around there but the, there's only tons if you find them yeah and um, use them correctly probably but uh, <laughs> I, I think I'll get around well because obviously I'll probably want to try and find them all before obviously going and facing Ganon because you get your final mission near the very beginning of the game. Do you want to point playing the rest of it then? Because it builds you up. It, you gradually have to regain because you wake up, Link doesn't remember anything, he's got a broken sheet of slave, so you have to repair that, find these memories and continue. But if you've already played up. the last level, Yep, yeah, no, you've got the final mission to go and face Calamity Ganon. But pretty much you're not going to be strong enough, are you? So you have to try and get yourself armoured, weapons, you've got to get your health up, you've got to get your stamina up, so you have to really do some exploring. Yeah. But um, it's a really good game, and uh, I think obviously I'm going to try and continue it uh, through. But a uh, game that I think that probably you should uh, try at least as well. Uh, maybe I will. Um, and we've got the Wii U version of it. Yes. Um, is there any Wii U specific things that make it a better? Because it was always meant to be a Wii U game. I'm going to hazard a guess that some things like when you're using uh, your scope on the sheet as they to pinpoint like your shrines, your towers and that, um, you can use motion controls with the gamepad. So I'm guessing that's you're using um, the handheld version of Switch, you can't do that. Right. I'm guessing. But because uh, that was I'm something sure. I wonder because the, like everyone thinks of it as a Switch game, but it was always intended to be a Wii U. Well, game. it was originally released on the Wii U, wasn't it? Well, they, they were both released at the same. I think they were released on the same day. Was it not um, delayed though? I don't know, but it was always intended to be a Wii U game, and I just wondered if there was something that you couldn't do on the Switch. That Potentially you that I haven't found though as well, because I haven't played a lot, a lot, but I've put a few hours in. Just obviously not a lot to complete it uh, through yet, so you never know. Might some functions might come in towards the end. So you're going to, going to complete it? I'm definitely going to complete it because it's an amazing I'll, game. I'll hold you to that. So next next month we'll be done. Not by next month. How long do you need? I'm sorry. I want to take my time and enjoy the game. <sighs> See, the, there's a. A couple of the YouTubers that I watch that are doing this challenge, they're, they're going to complete 52 games this year. That's one a week. You're saying you can't complete one in two months? No, because I haven't got that much time in it. Look, I'm You're letting this side down here. <laughs> right, what 52 <laughs> games are you completing in, in a year? Well, I might go for both the... PS4 and Vita versions of My Name is Mayo. Wait, you've already played with one of them. Oh, well, I can do them again. No. Um, let's see. That's true. Oh, do you know, why did I sell the, the 360 version of uh, Avatar Burn on Earth? You never even completed that game. 
You just got the achievements for it? I've got, I got a thousand gamer score on that. Yeah. In the tutorial level. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, that's completed then, yeah. isn't it? Because you don't finish the game. <laughs> anyway, that was uh, what we asked each other to play. So, there's a few games that we, we chose to play just off our own back. Uh, and for me, I finished off a game that was in Monthly Games two mm. months ago, I think. Yeah, something like that. Um, I've done a full playthrough and completed a full 108 star run of Suikoden. There we are, last battle um, before the end of the game, or last mass battle before the end of the game. There is another um, fight where you get your, your smaller team and you, you do the traditional turn-based combat. This one works like a bit like rock, paper, scissors, so you've got, um, was it charge beats, bow, magic beats, charge, and uh, whatever's left. <laughs> others, and there's some other others as well, but they're they're like additional attacks. Um, but this is a return to the monthly games as well, isn't it? Yeah. Well, uh, I finally finally did get through it. I said I was going to complete it with a full 108 stars, and I did that. Uh, so this is the this, like I say, this is the final mass battle. It's just after uh, Grammy was being resurrected. Spoiler alert for anyone. Who you know, still is yet to play a nearly 30 year old game. You know you meant to say spoiler a little before you spoil it. Aiden, it's nearly a 30 year old game. So? We can get we can get away with spoilers for it, I think. Um, but yeah, uh, I play this game a lot actually. Well, I say a lot, I, I play it regularly. Um, I usually play a Sweet Eating game every year. Uh, I actually played the DS one all the way through last year, uh, this one sort of back end of last year, beginning of this year, so um, I'm probably I'm probably good for a little while, um, but I will go back to one of the Suikoden games at some point. And you can see here, I actually started off with a, a smaller army than the Imperials, but you can see that because it's not my first rodeo. I've played this game before. Know what I'm doing. Just absolutely smashed them. Yeah. And that'll be the last of them just mopped up. So. I did finish it. Um, this game just never gets old for me. I I, I love the game. I, I I was lucky enough to to play it when it first came out on the the PlayStation, uh, and it's just as well that I played it when it first came out, but before it, it started gathering in price. I, I, I think we're now up to hundred and something pound. I think I think we're over two hundred pound for this one now. No, uh, um, I've seen eBay listings for like 100, 150 that I've sold, so it's around that price point, no. I believe. Uh, but it certainly wasn't when I first got it. It was the the first real JRPG that I played, and I loved it, uh, and I've always loved it. Uh, it does have a lot of, of sort of carryover in the sixteen bit graphical style and what have you. But I just love the story, and I'm, even though I know how to do it now, I still love the grind of going through getting all 108 stars. Um, well, you've got an incentive to do it, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. Obviously, if you want to to revive or resurrect Gremio at the end, well, you don't resurrect Gremio at the end. Uh, you do need to get the other 107 stars. But uh, to actually have it happen, you have to have the stars, don't you? Yeah, you have to collect them all. But yeah, I love the game. Can't can't say enough good things about it. Um, I'm not sure if it's something that would appeal to you because it is very, very dated in its graphical style. Well, that doesn't really matter to me though. I'll be yeah, well, you say that. 
I've run out of my way at times to play games which have got retro graphics and yeah. like so. But when you say retro graphics, what are you talking? Really pixelated. <laughs> when was the last time you spent some real time on a, an 8 or a 16 bit game? You play them, but you don't. But I don't go through them exactly. fully. Yeah. Probably, the, oh, well. probably the last time you've done that was the last time that we played through Streets of Rage or, no. or Pro Protector together or something like that. No, sooner than that. Probably, probably like a year or two. What, what game was that? It was released more recent, but it was in like a more 8 16 bit style game of River City Girls. That wasn't pixelated. Yes, it was. That, that was modern graphics. <laughs> right. It was. It was a retro style game, but retro it was all, style game. It was all in retro graphics. graphics. No, it wasn't. It bloody was. No, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> so I played through that. What else have you played? Well, I've. I don't know why, but other recent months I haven't been playing as much, like for a decent amount of time. But uh, I've only got uh, one more game for this month, and. I've actually played a sports title a decent amount. Um, I went and played FIFA 21. So then, sports time. Yeah, um, I normally don't play career modes on FIFA or sports games in general. But uh, See, I always do. I never really played this FIFA game. Yeah, um, I made an ultimate team, but uh, then stopped playing and then for some reason, I just came back and started playing the career mode, um, playing a Celtic. Um, but with it being obviously not the newest up to date title, um, you don't have the most recent squad update, so you don't. But this is playing it on the Series X. Yes. Um, not a massive difference. At it's exactly end. the yeah. same. It's like they've done absolutely nothing to it ex apart from charging again for it. Um, which seems to be a FIFA thing. Although, it's not going to be FIFA, FIFA for very long. No, because um, they've lost the license. But they haven't lost well, it. They've decided not, not to pay to for it. it. Because they'll make more money if they don't have to pay for the player licenses and club licenses. Which is uh, stupid on their part, really. So, you you know, you said that you you played a little bit of Ultimate Team. Are you still going to play Ultimate Team when instead of buying Lionel Messi from PSG, you're buying Sergio Mendes from Paris Red Blue? No. Definitely not. But, but EA seems to think it makes no difference that you're still spending just as much money on the game. Well, I spend no money anyway. So <coughs> well, aye. You've got that, but... Uh, but, you know, they still expect people to buy the game at 70 quid, even God, though no. it's exactly the same as the 50 quid game. Not going to happen. Which is exactly the same as the, the 10 quid game or whatever it is that's the old one. But then... Uh, that's why it just got meh for me. Oh, I'd go all actually. Yeah. And he's, he's beat the last man, stitched him up like a kipper. So, um, playing to obviously a career mode, something that, as I've said, I don't really do. I know usually that's my thing. Yeah, it, it really is. But uh, for some reason, I thought I want to play a career mode for a sports game because I never actually do. I can't remember the last time I actually even started a career mode on a sports game, I'll be perfectly honest. But uh, obviously, I've just sat there with it being a football game. But uh, And I've won the season, I've won the Scottish Cup. So, But for some reason, I couldn't get in the League Cup. Like, I got the trouble. Because FIFA? Yeah, pretty much because FIFA. No. But uh, with me winning, obviously, this season's league, I'm probably going to do at least another season or two, and then hopefully I'll win the Champions League, get a proper full on treble instead of just, you won the double because you can't win the treble. No. <sighs> I don't know why, as FIFA's a bit meh to me now. Because it's been the same thing for so many years. Well, I, I mean, I think we mentioned there that although you're playing this on the Series X, I've played the Xbox One version and it doesn't look much different. But well, I was I was 
thinking, what, watching it. Uh, usually it's me that's playing it, so probably I'm, I'm not like quite so critical. But I was watching it, I was thinking, this could be FIFA 10 on the 360. Probably could be, actually. It, it seemed like it was just the same game, um, which is disappointing. Yeah, it definitely is. Um, I think even if they've done something as actually make a decent character model for the players, because when they're playing it, I've seen... Well, I think you've got no chance because uh, they obviously were, were touched on them. Yeah. They're giving up the FIFA licence because they seem to think that the, that the big drawing power of the title is that it says EA on it and not the fact that it says FIFA. Um, and has all the teams and players licensed. Uh, well, it hasn't because you've... Cause, uh, well, you don't have your event this, do you? No, like Piedmont Calcio is not no, but you've the, still got... the team of... Cristiano Ronaldo and Zinedine Zidane and Pavel Nedved. Although, are they, uh, maybe they were all different as well. No, you've got the players. Yeah, you've got the players. Right. See, so you've got Ronaldo and that, but uh, it's not called Juventus. It doesn't have the badge, yeah. it doesn't have the kits. Piedmont Calcio. Yeah. Which is... Which is not even close, let's be fair. No. The only thing that's close is the colour scheme. But... Uh, I think with... Um, with Pez sort of disappearing. Well, it's not what came to football. Well, yeah, but you can only play exhibitions. Aye, well, that's only about six squads. With the disappearance of what might as well be a disappearance of Pez, I think FIFA being the only game in town shows just how stagnant it has become. With them getting getting short of the FIFA license, maybe someone else can pick that up, well, and yeah. we'll get. Uh, well, you say that it's the only thing, but I've seen gameplay trailers for a new football game that's going to be free to play. And it's, uh, I think they're trying to get it out this year. Free to play. Oh. You say that, but. Please insert credit card to play the second half. No, apparently it's not even going to have the <laughs> ultimate team or something. It's going to have something. They're not doing that with the goodness of the heart. Well, to be fair. <laughs> I don't think they'll go to EA's level of you have to pay £70 and well, then obviously you have to pay not because it's free to play but it'll be like please insert credit card to play second half well, and that no, sort of you'll crap. be able to play teams and that ah, see I remember playing Patrick Hero in the arcade and it was insert another 10 pence to play the second half that's how they made the well, money well you never know until it gets released though, do well you? I guess not So, but uh, there is obviously people developing games so you never know obviously because I think there's going to be one or two announced so no. realistically see and you never know Pez could always make a comeback and could have the FIFA licensing if they wanted it uh, to be honest I mean there's two big barriers to to that happening number one um, the FIFA license is always going to be quite an expensive thing to get a hold of and number two it's Konami yeah. you you think EF's cheapskates Konami are still hawking out the the prized IPs to the highest bidder to make pachinko machines yeah like yeah I guess only time will tell won't it so. yeah we'll see so I, uh, I did have one other game that I did put a good amount of time in uh, over the last month and having played a lot of retro, as I said, like obviously you saw Sega Rage's collection there and Sweet in one uh, and, and I did mention I played a lot of Evercade. Uh, I did need to get a modern fix, uh, so I did fire up the PS5 and play a bit of Watch Dogs Legion. So I finally got around to playing this one too. Um, I think you played a little bit of it when you first got your PS5. Yeah, um, um, then for some reason never continued it. Well I never played it because you were playing it, um, but because you kind of gave up on it. About well, a bit of uh, go. Yeah, then getting distracted and that with showing you things. So it was the, um, I, I quite like these bits which I think is probably the bits that frustrate you because it's like 
No. If this isn't all action, this is a puzzle that you've got to work out. No, you don't actually feel strained there as much as you'd probably think. If I remember correctly as well, um, when I put it in the month in games, this was actually the bit which uh, I've done for the month in games as well, if I remember correctly. But uh, I'd, I'd be surprised. Because <laughs> no, this was like somewhat where I left it off, if I remember correctly. But uh, no, when I was playing it, it was a good game. And obviously, I have no clue why I stopped. I'll be perfectly honest with you. But I just like to say, I like to say it because it's familiar. Because um, obviously we are in the UK, this is set in London, um, and although we are not from London, London is very familiar. I think the a lot of the the streets in London are very remin reminiscent of uh, of Newcastle, which is our closest city. Albeit London seems to be a bit scruffier. Um, I don't know if that's just because it's a bigger place. Yeah, potentially. But, uh, there you go, managed to hack that and see what badness this bad lot's up to with their dodgy Cockney accents. So you got this uh, way back? Pretty much near the launch of the PS5. But so it was this was one of the launch games that you got with your PS5, um, and I never played it. Cause you were playing it, but and then well, you were supposed to be playing it, but you, you haven't played it for a long time. Since um, I started playing it, and and it's it's a game that I always wanted to play because of the the setting, because it's in the UK. Um, it's something that's a little bit more familiar, and a bit like Forza Horizon Four. Um, I can actually forgive out a lot of its shortcomings just because it's so familiar. Mm. Um, as, as I said there, I don't don't know London particularly well, um, but the architecture of London, especially around Westminster, is very similar uh, to Newcastle anyway, um, except on a possibly a bigger scale. Well, definitely on a bigger scale, and as I said, it does. It just seems a bit grimier. I don't know if that's just a London thing, um, but it's instantly uh, familiar, and I could do without the Cockney accents if I'm honest. Yeah, um, they weren't the best, were they? I mean, it would. It was like so. Some of the voice acting on it is a little bit like um, someone from a Sheffield getting a job in EastEnders. It's, I mean, it's really quite poor Cockney accents. Um, that being said, like I said, I can forgive it a lot of shortcomings because I get to drive on the right side of the road and things like that. Um, but it's not great, I think it's fair to say. Um, it looks brilliant, especially you know, yeah. you know play, playing it full 4k 60 frames um, absolutely brilliant it looks but it's not exactly in the open world genre uh, a red dead or a gta beta is it no it's and not. they're older games now but well, i'm sure i'm sure i'll keep playing it um just because i'll like i said I like the setting I'm, it's, it's nice when you see things that you recognise too. Yeah. Like, I don't know. It's not not quite to the same extent as Forza Horizon Four because that actually it was a lot more close. That was like it? around our area there, but um, but it's those places that you that you've been, places that you've spent time at. So yeah, it's quite nice to see that in video game form. But that's everything that we really put put some time into this month. Which means we're at the part of the video where we decide what we're going to have each other play next, next month. month. So what have you chosen for me then? Well, I really shouldn't have to, to do this to get you to play presents that you've got. But I also got you for your birthday Metroid Dread. Uh, so you can get that, please. Yeah. Apparently it's brilliant. 
and I'm sure there will be people in the comments that will tell you how brilliant that is and what, what an arsehole you've been for not putting that in the machine. I have put it in the machine. From your birthday till now. I have. Or you put, did you get the update on it and go, right, that's me done now? No, I've put about half an hour into it. But you can play that. Yeah. Um, for you, I went with uh, also somewhat recent console. Um, this one being for Xbox One, and it was again that. Well, actually, didn't. Uh, well, it hasn't been a long time since we picked up for the Xbox One answers for you. Alien Isolation, because this was again that you said that you were quite interested in, and obviously we'll pick it up. I, well, I, I love the Alien films, um, and apparently this one is pretty good. It's oh. apparently meant to be better than some of the ones that came out on PS3. But that probably wouldn't be hard. I, I can't remember. I think the the last great Alien game was probably uh, there was a, a Commodore sixty four one, um, which was brilliant. I mean, graphically it was crap, uh, but it, it felt like Alien. And apparently, this one feels like Alien. The only thing that I'm a little bit uh, hesitant about it for is because it's in first person and I don't tend to like first person, I hate first, first person shooters for example. Well, it's not meant um, to be so much a shooter though is it? Is it a horror game? Well it is and that's so I, I might be alright because I like, I love Mirror's Edge as first person. So well, maybe you take the shooter element out of it. Although surely I get to shoot at a, at a xenomorph. Probably with the uh, as you can see in the back of Flamethrower, but uh, probably not with like a pistol or something. Why not? I'm sorry. Can I not just take take my shirt off and start hitting it with it? I guess you'll have to find <laughs> out, won't you? And apparently this is canon as well. Um, yeah, well, there you go. So, yeah, I'll, I'll look forward to giving that a go and see what I think of it. But that is it for this month. Um, I'm sure in addition to to the games that we've given each other, we will have other things that we'll play going forward. You know, Hopefully next month I'll actually play more than one of our games. Finish Zelda. <laughs> well, well, we'll give it a go. <laughs> but uh, no promises. But that is definitely it for this video. Yeah. So uh, we will see you again in whatever video we'll put out next. But until then... If you haven't already, give us a like, a share, and subscribe, and then a notification bell so you're going to find out when we upload. We will see you in the next video.